and welcome to this special show on the market impact of the Maharashtra and Haryana poll verdict and more importantly, the government's momentous oil and gas decisions yesterday. I'm Lata Venkatesh and with me is Ekta Batra. Hi Lata, well it's going to be an exciting Monday morning of trade I think but in your sense, how do you think we're going to react? Because we have a whole host of cues to watch out for. We've seen some recovery which has taken place in the global markets besides that oil and gas and as well as, well as of course the assembly election. I agree with you. I mean there seems to be a global consternation. We cannot yeah. forget that ultimately uh, the global cues will come back uh, even if we temporarily look at domestic cues. And globally it appears to me but that the negativity on the growth scare seems to have played out for now. It's too early to call. Uh, in, uh, last week in the US it was one day down, one day up, one day down, one day up. But uh, it appears that if you look at least at the crude market, that the big growth scare has kind of played out with crude now dipping up to nearly $80 and then coming back and uh, kind of stabilizing around $85 for Brent and around $83 or $82 for NYMEX. So mm -hmm. it appears that that big growth uh, volatility has played out. Uh, in the Indian markets itself, we have seen an, an, a continuing FII negative number. But uh, if the global negativity has played out for now at least, yeah. then we might see those numbers ebbing. And clearly, the FIs will react to the big domestic triggers. Uh, coming to the domestic triggers, uh, there is no denying that uh, the diesel price, uh, gas price announcements are likely to be seen as positive. We heard a lot of noise when the gas price decision got postponed that uh, is the Modi premium now at an ebb. Mm. That will clearly now come back on the table because bold decisions have been taken. Diesel price actually marketized. That's something which we have not attempted until the uh, uh, since the previous NDA yeah. government tried it out in the early 2000s. So that will be seen as seriously positive. As well, gas price, I think the market will take it very positively that although the current price is lower than the market anticipated mm. for those giants, uh, it is going to be adjusted every six months. And that itself will be seen as the Modi government making the announcements very clean. Mm. It is going to be based on some market parameters and not ad hoc political economic decisions. The uh, political decisions, I'm, I'm really not uh, uh, able to fathom just yet. On the one hand, it is clearly strengthening the government in that two more states, and one of them a very big state like Maharashtra, giving more MPs, uh, giving more uh, uh, Rajya Sabha votes yeah. to the BJP sooner or later. Mm. The political mandate, I would still, you know, hold my uh, uh, judgment on that. Uh, you know, one doesn't know whether the uh, electoral verdict is as overwhelming, a steamrolling uh, yes with the BJP as it was in the Lok Sabha elections, or is the populace telling the government, that telling the BJP more particularly, that you are on notice. Uh, mm. It's not as overwhelming a yes as it was in the Lok Sabha elections, uh, which perhaps is good in a way, uh, keeps the BJP still on its toes. But I would think that only over there, maybe a little bit of negativity could be interpreted by the market. Of course, we will have to ask all our guests. Uh, but uh, a lot of stocks you will watch out for? Yes, uh, a whole host of stocks, especially the oil and gas space. So that will be one of the lead indicators where uh, we could see the markets actually react positively and led up by stocks such as ONGC. Besides that, we will have Reliance, which will be in focus. So it will be interesting to watch out for how Reliance Industries trades in tomorrow's trading session. We will have IOC, BPCL, as well as HPCL, which will be reacting to the deregulation of diesel prices and hence maybe some hope on LPG as well as kerosene going forward. So those stocks will be in focus. We'll watch out for IGL or Indoprastha Gas Limited where that CNG price hike has been announced. So that stock will be in focus. Besides that, there will be a lot of power stocks uh, and not to mention, not to forget, Gale which will be mm. in focus as well. And uh, a lot of power stocks, Lata, as well as fertilizer stocks will be in focus. So the likes of Lanco, GMR could see some amount of... Uh, some amount of movement and fertilizer, I would think, might see a little bit of a downtick. All right. Of course, we have a panel of experts who are yes. joining us. And we have a big panel of guests. So let's start uh, introducing them. We have Dipan Mehta of uh, BSE and NSC joining in. Joining in. We have MK Venu of Amar Ujala, Ajay Srivastav of Dimensions Consulting, who are already with us. And we will also be joined by political analyst Girish Kuber, Sanjay Pugalia of CNBC Awaz, and market experts like Nehruvun Irani and Mr. V.K. Sharma will be joining in as well. 
All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, that is uh, Venu, Ajay, Deepan, who are already with us. Thank, Thank you, you very much for joining us. Uh, uh, well, uh, 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 Ajay, let me start with you. Uh, what What is your overall sense? Uh, one, the big economic decisions, policy decisions that came yesterday and the big political verdict. Uh, tomorrow morning, good for the markets? I think it's good for the market, of course. I think uh, in a manner of speaking, the decision on the deregulation of diesel was made simpler by a drop in prices, so that's gone on pretty well. But I think there will be an element of little bit of disappointment, Lata, in terms of the way Maharashtra has turned out, mm -hmm. because that clearly shows that the verdict is not as equivocal as we expected the market spirit to be. So yes, there will be great positives. On the deregulation side, you'll have a, again a bump up in oil marketing companies, which have already run up quite a bit. But I don't think that the euphoria will carry on to the market, because I think it's kind of Haryana victory was a given, in a sense. It was Maharashtra, people are looking at it, and that kind of came out disappointing, that's one. Number two is, that, you know, whatever we say and do, we are in a much more volatile global scenario, and therefore, the positive which come out both on the positive on the global side and the positive on the economy, I think will get sold down too, because that is where the market is today. It's an expensive place. IT has not performed well. So barring the oil and marketing block, really, if you see, mm. All other blocks of sectors are fairly under pressure at this point of time, and I don't think the pressure is going away. Okay, that's Deepan, would you agree with that? Uh, two very important points that uh, Ajay is making uh, in on the negative side, that the market is an expensive place and therefore the rally could get sold into, and uh, more importantly, that Maharashtra verdict leaves a doubt in the mind. Uh, what's your sense about yeah, well, I think from a sentiment point of view, the result in Maharashtra is not exactly positive. Mm. But on the other hand, I think this diesel deregulation and gas price increases, you know, will show that the government is on the right track as far as reforms are concerned. But by and large, I think uh, this particular event, the elections, is inconsequential because at the end of the day, it's not going to impact the economy macros or corporate results per se. So to that extent, I think it would have a sentimental effect uh, considering that BAC and NSC are both in Maharashtra and Bombay and we <laughs> sort of, you know, get more... Uh, involved in the elections in our local state. Hmm. But apart from that, I think it's not been any difference. Uh, but I think I would just like to add one more negative to what you have spoken. That being that so far, the question I, we are asking ourselves is that has the Modi government taken any tough decisions? Hmm. I mean, end of the day, we have got structural problems as far as energy pricing is concerned, as far as uh, power mining. Every, every particular hmm. industry, key industry, has certain challenges where tough decisions need to be taken. And so far, I don't think any tough decisions have been taken. It's easy to deregulate diesel, but when oil mm. prices go back to $110 or so, will they start increasing diesel prices and you know, give the freedom to the oil marketing companies? I don't think so at this point of time. What about the gas price hike then? That wouldn't be a tough decision that they've made even earlier than what the date given was? Yeah, well, if it had gone much higher, then that would have been a tough decision. This is kind of a bit of a compromise between what the formula as per Rangarajan committee was and what the present uh, price is. In any case, I think you know it was long, long overdue, mm. and uh, in a way, it doesn't really affect uh, the the general population per se. It's more of a user feeder industry which gets impacted. But you know, having some more tough decisions underway, that would have made a big difference, uh, you know, from a long-term point of view at least. That clearly is a, uh, a very uh, important observation mm. that they have not had to take uh, the very tough decision on gas or diesel but well fortune favors the brave Absolutely. so they have got a situation which is to their liking but uh, you'll have to give it to them that uh, uh, you know the decision at least has been very favorable but uh, uh, mk venu uh, the important point our guests are making from the market point of view is that uh, maharashtra leaves a little to be desired how would you read the political result and how it strengthens uh, the modi government in its economic uh, uh, scenario in its ability to take economic policy decisions Lata, I, I think uh, the Maharashtra verdict, although BJP has not Someone done as well as uh, anticipated, people thought they would get a majority. But even even now, if they if they manage to do a good deal with Shiv Sena, uh, and Shiv Sena has asked for deputy chief ministership, if they if they do that and decide to work together, I still feel that uh, Maharashtra and Gujarat uh, having uh, ruling Maharashtra and Gujarat together and uh, the same government at the centre, uh, they could work very well in terms of absorbing a lot of uh, foreign investment. Mm. Uh, Modi has been talking about $100 billion of the foreign investment. Now, my, my sense is that he, he wants to absorb, it's easier to absorb these investments in coastal states uh, because their competitiveness in, uh, in the coastal states will be much higher uh, rather than the landlocked, you know, the Hindi mm. heartland. 
So I think from that standpoint, Maharashtra, Gujarat is important. And I feel that Modi has that in mind. And uh, he will uh, try to sort of uh, uh, create a, a framework where, at least in the coastal states, the investment absorption happens very fast, the make in India that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that said, the, some of the reforms, uh, the diesel uh, price hike, uh, the uh, diesel price uh, deregulation, uh, decontrol, I think it's a big one. It was, it was the elephant in the room, and this mm. was the right time for them to have done it. Uh, and uh, uh, and the, the general sentiment is that going forward, he'll take, uh, uh, there'll be a rapid fire kind of decision making uh, in the next uh, 15, 20 days. That's the sense we get in Delhi. Mm. Uh, they may sort of even set up something on the GSC, some committee to uh, decide on the constitutional amendment, etc. And uh, and his his increasing uh, uh, presence in the states will help in in establishing those constitution, uh, you know, uh, clearing those constitutional hurdles for GST. Uh, and and uh, and overall, Lata, I, I agree with you that uh, that you know the, the the global headwinds on on growth they have not uh, passed us. And you you rightly you said temporarily they may seem to. Uh, so in the medium term, you have to be careful about maybe China. What will happen in China? Property bubble led maybe growth recession. So uh, this is the right time for the Modi government to do a lot of reforms to uh, to fortify or insulate ourselves from a possible headwind uh, coming uh, maybe yeah. six months, uh, seven months from now in the global context. I think this is the window for them mm. to do it. Mm. The next six months are very critical. I don't think they can delay it beyond the next six months. Okay. Ajay, I wanted to come to you specifically on Reliance. How do you think Reliance would possibly react in tomorrow's trading session uh, given all of the news on the gas price? Because very simply, I think if you look at the global scenario, the gas prices have fallen drastically in the U.S. and the global markets in the last one to two months, and absolutely there is a crisis in those markets. So for them to get an increase, and, the, and it's very clear, the path is clear. Every six months, they will get a dollar forty or dollar fifty increase over the path until they reach the target at eight dollars. So it's now a matter of time. That's one. Number two is that the decision is that they will credit the money to the gas pool account on the D6 discovery, which is a shortfall, mm -hmm. till the arbitration process finishes. So actually, there will be cash lying in the cash pool account mm -hmm. with Gale, and it's not with the government of India they have to go if they win the arbitration. So two great positives. One, the cash moves into a cash pool account on that shortfall in production into the new price rate. Number two is a very clear trajectory price increase. I think it's a great positive for Reliance. I think they got a good deal. Forget the price increase. They even got the benefit of cash going into the cash pool account. And it's a great, I think it's a great positive for the, for the company. Mm -hmm. So you expect, uh, Ajay, tomorrow that you're going to see a bump up in uh, uh, Reliance price as well. And uh, what would be your take on the OMC stocks? Uh, uh, you know, people were building in uh, this gas price hike coming, but I thought people were building in a higher number. No, uh, let us see. Uh, one, the reason to build this is that fact also that now with the diesel deregulation gone, Plus, they have said the subsidy, if they give at all, will be shared between all the private and the public players, mm. which also opens up the route for retailing of oil and petrol by Reliance at some point of time mm. now. So that's also a great positive. So all, all in a sense, for Reliance, it's a three or four positives. It, yeah, that's what I said. It's a little bit of delay, but it's at least a path is very clear not to happen. Otherwise, it was the binary situation does yeah. not happen. So mm. that path is clear. Now, oil marketing companies, I think it's a great story building up there. They're undervalued. And if the government lets them perform independently, they will divest, I think, stakes in this company. They may go, let it go, at least to the point where they become a, literally a commercial-oriented enterprise at some point, maybe even consolidate two of these companies together. So I think in the next three years, the OMC will be the great place to be because the reform process is going to give them the first big benefit of both consolidation as well as free play of the market prices. Okay. okay. You've got Vinod Sharma of uh, HDFC Securities also joining in. Uh, Vinod, the, your first thoughts, how does the market react tomorrow? We still have negative FII numbers, let us remember that. But the global scenario, at least in the last 24 hours, uh, appears to have uh, swung uh, from very, very uh, uh, you know, pessimistic levels. Uh, let's understand uh, that barring the uh, exit polls, I think the expectations weren't there that the that, that uh, the current uh, manifestation, uh, BJP and other uh, other parties would get the kind of seats or, or, or a full majority in Haryana and as well as Maharashtra. Now, Haryana they've got, and Maharashtra I think those numbers will not be there. So I think while it may it may it may not sound as exciting because the numbers have not been there, but I don't I don't think it will it will negate the market to that extent. 
Yeah. First and foremost, market will look at this perspective that here was the oil and gas pricing which you had postponed. Uh, yeah, mm. has now happened. Mm. So the one right tick. Second is you have decontrolled diesel. Second tick. So I think the overall the numbers add up that the markets are now going to look up and they're probably open with a big bang up on mm. Monday itself. Oh. And thereafter it will be a function of to what extent the market goes. Should it break the 7950 7, level, then the short covering will happen. And mind you, the the first, let's say, uh, the, the, the basis of a bull market yeah. is essentially begun by when the big bears cover, uh, mm. get to cover the shorts. Mm. So I think if, if it triggers, then I think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see high levels, but definitely positive on Monday. Okay. Uh, Dipan, I'm, I'm not going to get into the numbers game with regards to the Rajya Sabha and how incrementally beneficial this will be for the BJP in the Rajya Sabha. But come the winter session, do you think it's going to be easier for them to possibly push some key reforms which they haven't been able to do in the previous session, such as CFTI and insurance? I don't think so. I don't think the Rajya Sabha numbers per se changing, are changing. changing. Yeah. And to that extent, I think there were disappointments when the last parliamentary uh, sort of sessions were held. So I think it's status quo as far as uh, you know getting acts passed and getting bills passed in the uh, Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha per se. Of course, they have the option of these joint session of uh, Rajya mm. Sabha and Lok Sabha together, mm. but they haven't exercised that option as yet. And that's where I was coming from. That where are the tough decisions? Mm. I mean, you want to take some bold decisions. Get some legislation. So the passed. winter session will be quite decisive in that. So your point is, rally still get sold into till until proved otherwise. Yes, maybe so. Like but I think is. Monday uh, certainly have to agree that you may have a bump up. Mm -hmm. Global factors also favoring plus key announcements. And end of the day, I think uh, we are fine with the BJP Shivasena government. That's the base case just mm -hmm. now, and that is always the case uh, until this. Uh, uh, alliance kind of broke off uh, for various reasons which we need not, need not go to okay. right now. But we were comfortable with that kind of an alliance ruling Maharashtra. Okay. Well, uh, um, uh, I'll come back to all three of you, Ajay, Deepan and uh, Vinod, as to whether, we are, have we already seen the highs for the year? Uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that question still remains. But, uh, uh, Venu, you know, it's not been the case that even in the past, uh, uh, when the Congress was ruling, that Congress uh, states have been very clement towards the GST. Their chief ministers behave like prime ministers. So do you think two more states getting a BJP uh, chief minister is going to push the GST any sooner? Well, Lata, I, uh, from what Mr. Jaitley told me some time ago, uh, after the budget, uh, when I spoke to him, he, he said that there were just a, uh, one or two hurdles uh, uh, which remained uh, uh, with the chief, with chief ministers expressing some fears over uh, uh, their revenue, uh, uh, compensation, etc. And he seemed confident that they could, uh, that they could move ahead and uh, get them together, uh, get them on board. Uh, uh, so I don't think GST reform will be such a, uh, a big issue. But um, what I'm, what I think, Lata, is that the bigger, the, the bigger hurdle will come not from outside of the BJP. Uh, the bigger hurdles will come from, uh, in my view, within the Sangh Parivar, because only uh, two days ago there was a big uh, conference of the Sangh Parivar bosses in Lucknow where there, there was uh, some uh, uh, noise, noises uh, coming out uh, saying that we, instead of make in India, what we should do is made by India. Uh, so there is a, uh, within the Sangh Parivar, there is a strong protectionist uh, DNA, which uh, Narendra Modi will have to... Uh, uh, negotiate uh, over the next, uh, you know, you saw the way in the Flipkart case, uh, suddenly statements started coming uh, from uh, within the Sangh Parivar outfits on uh, there should be some con uh, control, uh, uh, controls imposed on pricing control on online retail traders, uh, similarly on genetically, uh, uh, on GM uh, uh, foods, uh, their Sangh Parivar has a view. So these are issues, uh, Lata, which BJP will have to negotiate. There is a bit, bit of a schizophrenia within Sangh Parivar uh, on reforms. While mm. uh, Modi wants to push for uh, big bang reforms, uh, but he will definitely have to uh, 
negotiate with the, with the, uh, the okay. bigger parivar on, on a whole uh, range of issues. Uh, so uh, the, don't uh, <coughs> don't underestimate that. that okay. That's what I uh, fair saying. point. Fair point, uh, Vedu. Thank you very much actually for joining us uh, on this political uh, as well as economic debate as well. We have to take a break at this point in time. Uh, we have Ajay Dipin and uh, Vinod still with us, and we have a lot of market questions as well. We'll have more experts joining in. They're back in a minute after this break.